Kim comes from Agco in Jackson, um, and she has a pretty unique story that pertains especially to uh, some workers from MSU in engineering. Uh, Kim has been in HR for over 29 years, and she graduated both with her uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in HR from Briarcliff. Uh, after spending 18 years with Polaris, she has been with Agco for 11, where she has been the senior manager um, for over seven years. Uh, she has two daughters, one granddaughter, and a grandson on the way within the next week. Uh, so thank you uh, for taking the time to be here today. Her husband, Steve, works as an outside salesman for Math Matheson Gas in Spirit Lake, Iowa. And you know, Kim really brings that extensive uh, experience and background when it comes to employee relations, recruiting, and finance. So we're excited to, to have Kim and as an Agco investor to, to be here and present and showcase a bit more about what her organization is doing, what they're looking at, the challenges and the opportunities that arise. So please help me welcome Kim. Okay, so um, as Garrett said, I'm Kim Phillips. Um, I am the HR person that everybody's kind of afraid of, I think, sometimes. But, um, and I also work in the industry. But I also have a very good story to tell about successes um, with visas and with international students. Um, so with that, I'm going to, that's our building. Um, just to give you guys an idea, I don't know if everybody knows what Agco is, but we're in Jackson, Minnesota. We make um, road gators, tarragators, tractors, a facility of about 1,000 employees. Of the 1,000, about 280 of them are engineers. So give you a good idea. We are a global company, um, and we have uh, plants all over um, with a total of about 20,000 employees. So uh, I wanted to put these slides in here. I know that my slides are not near as pretty, uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about why it's so important for us to have that talent. It's because, right, everybody needs to hire. Everybody needs employees. Um, so we, about seven, eight years ago, um, really started looking at our internship program um, and how can we grow that, how can we um, use those students to try them out, uh, get them uh, acclimated to us, um, get them networked, and then ultimately hire them. So that's kind of our strategy is to attract them, develop them, and retain them. Uh, with that, there's no path. Aaron had that, that road that went all over. It's exactly the way it is. So um, it was perfect, and I laughed when she put that up there because that's how I feel. But, um, so a little bit about the program that we have. We have interns up to 35 every summer. Um, from the interns, before they go back, they, um, if they're returning, they are not graduating. Uh, if um, we want them to come back, they get a letter to come back way before they even leave for the end of their year. That way we kind of secure them for the next year. Um, and then if they're graduating, if we uh, want to, we have two different programs. If we have a full-time position that looks like a good match for them, they'll have a full-time offer before they go back to school. Uh, if we don't, but yet they are a very, very good candidate and obviously we want to retain them, we have a development program. The development program is a two-year rotational program. So they rotate every six months into different areas of our organization. Could be across site, it could be um, from design engineering to manufacturing engineering to supervision. Uh, all of those, and that is based on what the employee wants and what um, the company needs. So it has to be a win-win relationship. So that's important for you guys to understand, I think, because when we get into um, sponsorship, it is complicated, and you have to understand uh, how important it is to your organization. Um, I know, you know, I hear the HR person. Um, I am that person. I do all of the uh, visas, and uh, I don't know everything about it, believe me. Um, I have an attorney that I can call, <laughs> thank God. Uh, but what I can tell you is that those of you that are educating the students, you're doing a phenomenal job. They know their visas and they know where they're supposed to go and what they need to do when they come into your organization. They guide me. Um, once I can build that relationship with them, then um, they, we work together on uh, what, you know, what their uh, situation is 
and that's important because each one's situation is a little bit different. And, and then we plan out a, a strategy. You know, what are we gonna do? Uh, what's our next move? If this happens, where are we gonna go next? So the case study I wanna talk about is um, two individuals that we did recruit from MSU, came as interns, uh, came through our programs, um, and obviously we wanted to retain them. So they both came to work for us, um, and they are um, significant others, and which makes it complicated a little bit, but uh, very, very rewarding to have two um, very, very important um, individuals in our organization. So um, came to us, they, they were on their OPT, that's perfectly fine. Our transition then is the dreaded H-1B, and I say that because we are that employer that gets stuck in that cap. And so we, uh, you know, as soon as we can possibly apply for that H-1B, it's in February, and we get that done. Um, he gets drawn in the lottery, but she doesn't. <laughs> so then we're in two different situations. Um, she only had, she didn't uh, have enough time um, for us to, so for her to stay working, so she actually had to go back to school. So she's back in school now, working for us for um, 20 hours a week. So she'll do that. We will apply again for her H-1B um, and hope that she can get, in, get drawn in that lottery. Um, that's the frustrating part is you just hope that they can get drawn. I've had them drawn and not drawn. Um, so if she does, that's fine, um, you know, that would be great. She'd have her H-1B, she'd continue with her school. We did move her to a different role um, because it will be a role that she can do while she's only working 20 hours a week. So again, being flexible as the employer is the name of the game. Um, you know, not saying too bad, see ya, glad, glad we got to meet you. Um, because all in all, if honestly, if we lose her, we probably lose him. And, and we don't wanna lose two good, good employees. So that's the case study that we're in right now. Um, very challenging. Um, like I said, they know the process better than I know the process. And I think the key to that is getting a relationship with them and listening to them. Um, you know, because we're all busy. I, I don't have extra staff to, to do just visas. Um, so that's, that's the role that I've taken. Um, it, because it is complicated, uh, I have had a, um, unfortunate situation when I first came to Agco, I had zero experience with immigration, none, because at, my, at Polaris, um, we did not do any, any sponsorship. So when I got there, um, I had an individual working for us and he was the sweetest guy in the whole world. Um, he had about 15 months left on his OPT and we were uh, applying for his H-1B. Um, it ended up that we didn't get him, he didn't get his application in time. He didn't have any time left. So he actually got kicked out of the country. And I had to tell him that, <laughs> um, that he would have to leave until we could figure something out. Now the sad part was, right, he has an apartment, he has a lease, he has all of that stuff that matters to each one of us. Um, now, he was a very, very good guy. So we kicked him out of the country, he actually went um, to an, another country uh, for us and worked in that facility, continued to work remote for, our, for us. Um, three months later, he got to come back, we got all his paperwork, he got his green card and he's a happy guy. So, so are we. Um, but that's kind of a very, very long story in a nutshell for you guys. Uh, and so I can tell you guys, um, if you're not looking at immigration, uh, even in the skilled labor, um, you're probably not going to staff your, your companies. So uh, we, you have to be open. Um, I just hired my first TN visa. Don't know much about it, but uh, we're going to figure it out. He's coming from Texas. Um, and we've had that position open for 346 days. So you just, again, looking at every aspect we can. Um, we are hiring, uh, now we're hiring a lot from, um, I'm not the Dominican, um, Puerto Rico. 
but they do not have to have a visa. Uh, so that's another avenue that we're looking at and um, is bringing people in um, from there. And I think we have our first 10 starting on the end of October, and October 31st, I think so. Uh, but it, uh, looking at every kind of avenue, and I think somebody said it over here, HR people just do the same old, same old, because that's all the tools they have. And, and sometimes that is true, but you have to get into these kind of sessions and um, you know, Green Steam has been huge for us uh, to network with and um, employers have to take that time and that step to get out and, and understand it at least and not be afraid of it. I mean, it happens and bad things happen, but you know what? Usually 99% of the time we can work through all of them. So um, I think I hit on every subject I wanted. I gave you guys kind of the two um, case studies. What about questions about our journey? Yeah. Do you allow pushback from the managers? Do I? Yeah. Yes and no. Um, managers are scared to death because they want, you know, uh, when, you're, when you're looking at it from the manager's perspective, they want to hire somebody, they invest all that training in them, they don't want to lose them. Um, so they are truly scared to death. You have to reassure them that, you know what, it'll be okay. Um, like, like Arun, when he got kicked out of the country, you know, he could have been so angry at me. Um, but his manager and him, we sat down, we made a plan. Um, we talked to our attorneys, you know, what can we do, what can't we do? Because obviously we don't want to get our company in trouble either. Um, and then uh, ultimately it ended up being a win-win but they are a little bit afraid you have to be that advocate and tell them it'll be okay you know we'll figure it out um, but they don't want to lose people that they invest time in so it's all about productivity and you know not having to retrain because retrain costs money but if you think about it there is money involved in uh, you know getting somebody's H-1B or ultimately their green card that's the goal um, how rewarding when they do get it, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, I probably shed a lot of tears when they come in and they're like, I got it. Uh, so it is pretty cool. But um, the, the hard part is you invest that money, but guess what? You invested in turnover too. You invested in relocating people. You invested, you're investing it anyway. So you just have to look at it in a different perspective. So, but they are afraid, yeah. Kim, can you expand a little bit on that? investment yeah uh, as far as not only financially but time and, and what are you looking at when when hiring the h1b um, and what recommendation would you have to employers in industry that that have that three to five thousand plus dollar sign-on bonus on their door yeah. that they can't find employees that there's an option yeah um you know we we've stayed away from a sign-on bonus just on purpose um because i think there's better ways to do business sign on bonuses will get you this far and then that person will leave and you're you're just doing it again so I'm not an advocate of that but um, you know I think they talked about you said twenty five hundred dollars for the h1b as a twenty five hundred dollars for the application I think premium processing. Pre processing so we'll do that it costs the, the manager about five thousand dollars I think to get the h1b now they also have the three years to budget for, um, for the green card process. So, you know, if they look at it in a big picture, if they would have turned that person over two or three times, they would have gladly paid for their whole green card. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that's the other piece of it is, you know, looking big versus right today and being able to plan for it. Um, get your pipeline built, and that's what we do with our internship program. It's totally our pipeline. But that money um, could easily go into having somebody here on a visa. Yep, I would totally agree with that. The one thing that um, I do is, first of all, I try to get to know them really well yeah. so that I know their personal situation. But the other thing is getting them um, together with other visa holders yeah. within AGCO so that they have a relationship. Um, sometimes we have them live in our townhouses so that they're close. Mm -hmm. um, their families get to know each other because like I said, they are very, very smart and they know their visa and they know what the next steps are. Usually they're very, they're more impatient with me because I'm the one that has to learn as I'm going. Um, 
So uh, that, that's probably the best advice I can give um, our employees is just be patient with me. You know, um, I do care and we, we will get through it, but I also understand their perspective. You know, it's their life. The situation that I have right now with this hu um, husband and wife is not healthy. Um, we have a huge housing so shortage in Jackson, Minnesota. And so do they buy a house? Where are they gonna live? They continue to a lease, do they not? Um, all those things that you know I take for granted, I don't even have to think about being kicked out or doing, you know, not being able to work. So now I have my income cut. Um, so those are all the things that they're going through. And I think that if you understand that um, and try to put yourself in their shoes a little bit, um, you will have more success with them. So, but. Yeah, I do agree. You, you get to test them out. You get to see them. You get to know them. And, and honestly, they're building a relationship with your company. And, you know, you always say you want your employees to love your company. You want to get their heart. Um, that's what you want with them. And, and you'll have it if you, if you work with them. Yeah. It cost me about $5,000 to onboard a, an assembler or a welder. Um, so each one that I turn over you know, I think about it, it easily pays for one of them to get through the process. And that's just within the first 30 days. That isn't even all the way, you know, through a year with them. So it is very expensive. Turnover is ridiculous, but nobody looks at that cost. You know, they just say, get me employees, get me employees. So it's a great way to look at it. So. Good? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I do have an exciting thing here because we will be breaking out the beer and wine. <laughs> we do have meat, cheese, crackers, and some other things, but can we please give Kim a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you, Kim. But before I let you go and indulge here a bit, we're gonna continue the conversations, but think about that story, those stories that we heard today, the return on investment, uh, that there, there is a process and it does work. It's not a straight line. Um, but you can get there. And so uh, think about those that, that are in your network that didn't attend this event. You can direct them to the video, but invite them to the next. Let them know that there are groups coming together, whether it's Green Seam, it's Kivu in, in Worthington, it's Region 9, it's the universities in higher ed. Uh, it really does take all components of this to come together to make it happen. Um, and so again, invite them to that next event. Um, PowerPoints will be sent out, if it's okay with the presenters, to those that attended. Uh, if I don't have your email, I don't have you. So if your email isn't on that list, I can't send it to you. So be sure to, to have that added. Uh, there are a few new faces in the room. And so if we haven't connected before, uh, please grab my card. Let's chat. Uh, we're not just going to chat about Green Seam. We're going to chat about your organization and, and how we can help you and how we can connect and align the dots because what happens here impacts the region. Um, I will leave out a teaser here because uh, through uh, membership and partnership with the uh, Main Street businesses focused on food and ag grant, we have the opportunity to allocate program dollars that can support an organization located across the region um, that is less than 500 employees with a cost, an initial $500 to support uh, that, that, those, that initial consultation. We will then match 25% of those dollars and up to $3,000 to help alleviate the cost. And so we talk about the return on investment of an employer taking that step and spending $5,000. We just reduced that by a little over 25%. So uh, consider that, reach out to us, inform those within your network, and I hope that we can continue these conversations, extend that dialogue into uh, this happy hour and social hour. But I want to give another big round of applause to, to those that uh, attended and to, to our, our fantastic speaker, so thank you.